Should we wait a few more minutes? Well, we could just get going and and because uh, we're going to record it anyway. So let's okay. go ahead and get going. When people come in, they come in. Okay, great. There we are. Okay. Well. <laughs> Okay, give me two seconds before you start recording. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, everyone. You can start now. Okay. One uh, on three. One, two, three. Okay. Good evening, everyone. I I'm Roy Prevo, and I want to thank you for joining me for this uh, recorded session on cruise speaking, and the um, Christine, who has saved my bacon so many times with technology. Uh, to which I'm en enormously grateful. I just want to uh, thank you, Christine, and share with you uh, my experience uh, with uh, speaking on cruise ships. Now, there, there's a few people. The very first question I want to get out of the way uh, before I even begin the presentation is, and I get it all the time, is people who are saying to me, well, if I train all these speakers, will I not put myself out of a job? And, um, and the, the question, the answer to that is between Royal Caribbean Princess and um, Royal Caribbean Princess in Holland, America, they do 300 plus itineraries a year. That's uh, excluding all the other cruise lines. So uh, I could do this till I was 122 and never ever fear about anybody worrying about whether people are going to um, I'm going to flood the market because I'm not going to flood the market on that. And so I just want to kind of sh put that out there before I begin. So let's go into the presentation. So what would you learn here? Well, you're going to learn about Roy's baptism of fire. You're going to learn about your new career as an edutainer. You're also going to learn about uh, enrichment lectures versus destination lectures, which we're all going to, we're going to get to in a few minutes. Uh, topics that resonate with everybody and how to do the research on your topic. Four ways of getting selected your life on board the cruise ship, how to wow your audience, and then I have an offer at the end, which is to, and, and covered two areas. One is Edmonton, and the other one is Vancouver, where I am doing um, workshops at the moment. By the way, last Saturday, we had, uh, I believe it was 12 people at our workshop in Vancouver uh, for the day. It was absolutely wonderful. People were just, um, I mean, I, I was, yes. It, 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 people leave there with an enormous amount of information, and they are bona fide cruise speakers. They just have to pick up the material and run with it. So uh, it's very easily done. Uh, I mean, there's work involved, but it is not a complicated process to work from. So who am I? Now, this is the very first thing that I share is um, uh, what you're going to see this evening today is um, is how I actually put myself into a position on a cruise ship. So this slide that you're looking at, who is Roy Prevo, uh, speaks to that. So you want to kind of give you give the people in the audience a, a bit of knowledge about who you are without elaborating. We've been on cruise ships where the speaker just goes on ad infinitum, ad nauseum about themselves and their doctoral programs and, and their travels around the world. And I don't tend to do that. I tend to try and make it as as uh, as quick as possible and um, and just get it out of the way. So what am I a Rotarian? So the first thing I ask the audience is how many Rotarians in the audience? And you always get seven or eight. And then I speak about the value of Rotary because I really believe in it. Uh, then I'd say that I'm an international speaker, best-selling author. I'm a futurist on the future consumer. So that gives them a little bit of a background of who I am and what I do. And then I tell them I'm a storyteller and amateur historian, which by the way, when you are doing your bio for cruise speaking, the two things you want to make very clear to the cruise speaker coordinator is that you are a storyteller and that you are an amateur historian. Because a lot of your lectures will be about history and about the curious side of history. <clears throat> and so that just makes good sense to have that as part of your, within the bio of who you are. And then I say I'm a former singer, dancer in music theater um, and not a lot of talent. Uh, so that's valuable because uh, in reality uh, that kind of it kind of brings you down to their level where you know so I found out I didn't have very much talent in fact I, would, I didn't know that the director of the theater company knew that and told me and fortunately for me I didn't uh, take it too personally 
but what I did do is that I, he asked me, because they were going bankrupt, he said, because of your business background, would you mind uh, becoming the president and producer? And I did and, and took them into the black and, the, and they went on to great and wonderful things. And this was back in Quebec before I came out to this wonderful province called British Columbia. So I always start off my presentations by what I call the attitude of gratitude, which is we've won the lottery living in Canada. And if you don't believe that, just look at what's happening in Kathmandu or let's look at what's happening in Syria. And I always, every morning I get up and I say, thank you, God, that I was born in this uh, country. And if you weren't, and if you're an immigrant who's watching this, then you know what I'm talking about. And I still say it's one of the best countries on the planet. And I always, I always encourage people to keep an attitude of gratitude about their lives, about what's going on in their lives, no matter, we all have struggles, but it's important to keep that in the back of our mind. And I do that on the cruise ship. In fact, the very first thing I say on the cruise ship is this, and you'd be shocked to know that people actually, I get wide applause on it. And I have people who come up to me on the deck and they say, thank you so much for reminding me how grateful I should be uh, to be uh, here. Now, what that does is it humanizes you and it creates an in incredible connection to your audience. And uh, so it's really important to, for me to say that. And now, you, know, you, you may choose to have another way to do that, but that's, that's generally a wonderful way to do it. So this is a typical cruise passenger uh, who happens to come on board and uh, it has probably left up, their eye, up to their eyebrows in work or struggles or overwhelm or whatever you want to call it. And, they, uh, and so that's your typical person who would come on the cruise. So they do not want to listen to boring people or statistics or anything to do with health, religion, sex. Any, they just want some fun. And so you can give them some tidbits of wonderful information, but you do not want to make it serious. Uh, although I get, you know, I can get into politics to a certain degree, but I, I really am a, a person who says, um, you know what, um, I'm, I, go on the, I go into the area where uh, it's entertaining and it is, it is a, a process simply of, of making it light, making it so that they can get several bits of information and that's about it. You have 35 minutes to do that. This is an also, often, they often feel like this, overwhelmed where they're totally overwhelmed with whatever's going on in their lives. And, um, and so, again, I come back to the point. Uh, people have said to me, well, yes, but can I go on and talk about dieting? No, you cannot. It's a cruise ship. People don't go on cruise ships to go on diets. Um, and, and no, you can't talk about marriage. And no, you can't talk about divorce or separation or reconciliation or anything of that nature. You are there to entertain. Uh, you're filling in time, and hopefully you're good at it to make the person who uh, comes on board open up the directory in the morning and say, ah, so uh, this guy Prevo is talking about Her Majesty's Secret Service. I'd like to know something about that. And so they show up and you give them tidbits of information about that. So that's, that's a great way to do it. So let me explain to you how my first baptism of fire, which I do not, repeat, do not recommend you ever do with any cruise line. Uh, but having always been one, as my wife says, who jumps out off the deep end of the pool every time. Um, she, uh, so anyhow, I, 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 what happened is this guy, gentleman out of Texas um, that I'd heard about from other people, I got this email from a friend who said, look, you might be interested in this, about doing cruises on, on or doing um, uh, lectures on cruise ships and getting the cruise for free. So I said, oh, yeah, sure. So I signed up for his coaching program. He helped me get involved in it. And then I'm sitting at my desk in October of the year. I didn't, I'm, I'm guessing it was 2008 or something like that, 2007, 2008. I think it was 2008. Working away like I am right now, and I get the phone call. And it's from Princess. And they say, um, we are missing a speaker in New York to go from New York to uh, Halifax, or to St. John, New Brunswick. And we want, and we want to know if you're interested in, in speaking on our cruise ship. And of course being the very first cruise, I said, absolutely. So I said, they said, great, 
um, you have to be at the airport. You have to be in New York on Saturday. This is Wednesday. And you have to talk about the mansions of Newport, Rhode Island and the Halifax explosion. So I remember I, I uh, you know, I didn't dare say, no, I can't do it. Although I would recommend everybody else say that. I said, sure, I'll be there. Hung up the phone and I went into absolute panic and called my wife and said, oh my gosh, they want a back-to-back -back cruise and they want me to talk about the mansions of Newport, Rhode Island, which I never even knew they had mansions. And the Halifax explosion, I just knew about it kind of, you know, a bit. Uh, so anyway, I said yes. And so I phoned my wife and I said, I'm, uh, now I've done it. So I, um, she said, well, we have a book here in, in our office on the, uh, on the mansions because she was working for an architect at the time. I said, great, bring the darn thing home. And then I went online and I found this PowerPoint presentation done by a teacher who, um, you know, out of Halifax, who wrote not only the PowerPoint, but had all of the, the dialogue around it. So that kind of saved my bacon there. So my wife comes home with this book and I open it up. And the very first thing I see is it's put together by the Newport, Rhode Island Historical Society. So the next morning, 7 a.m., that's Thursday morning, 7 a.m., I'm on the phone to the society saying, okay, do you have a DVD of the, uh, of the mansions? He said, yeah, absolutely. I said, great. Um, so I phoned my coach and I said, look, why don't I just play the DVD and narrate behind it and just kind of create a kind of a documentary thing? He's, no, 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 no. They can do that themselves. They want a speaker. So uh, I hung up from him. And I phone um, them back and I say, okay, I, I want you to FedEx the DVD to my webmaster who happened to be in Courtney at the time. And I phoned Marjorie and I said, Marjorie, you're getting a DVD tomorrow morning. I want you to pull all the mansions off the DVD, put it in a PowerPoint and send it to me. And I'll be flying red eye from, from Vancouver to New York with Cathay Pacific. And I'll be studying about the mansions and about the explosion. So here's what happened. I get to New York, I've got the presentations, I made them mine, I'm working hard, put it all together. We're on our way to St. John's, we're cruising away and uh, I do the mansion uh, workshop or the lecture first. They said, fabulous, everybody applauded, thought it was fabulous. They went and told the cruise director, this guy is really great. Came the time for the Halifax explosion a day later. Uh, I'm up there, I'm explaining the Halifax explosion, I'm doing all this stuff, I, everything's going well. All of a sudden, uh, two ladies walk in, they sat in the very front row of this big theater watching me, and when I was finished, I said to them, um, I said to everybody, do you have any questions? So this uh, lady stands up and she says, I have a couple of things I'd like to say, and I thought, oh my gosh, I've screwed up somehow, I gave wrong information or something. And this lady said to me, said to the audience, my grandmother was in her house on the shores of Halifax looking out at the ocean when the explosion happened. And when the explosion happened, she uh, got blown out into the street. My, my grandfather was working in the foundry, uh, which was several, about a mile and a half away. And because of the, the, the thickness of the walls uh, for the... Um, a foundry, uh, he wasn't hurt. So he came out of the foundry, managed to get home uh, in the chaos and dust and whatever else, and found out he had no home. So there was a, one of the people who were running the ambulances nearby said, look, they, they've got a morgue over in the basement of the school that didn't exist anymore, but the basement did. And they've got people, you know, I mean, those where the bodies are. You might want to go over and see if you can find your wife's body. And when they, he went over and he began walking, up and down the aisles of sheet-covered bodies, he recognizes her shoes and her foot is shaking. So he calls a medic and the medic came over and uh, revived her and she said, I wouldn't be here if that situation had, hadn't been there. So you can imagine what happened to me at that point. I just, I was nobody. Everybody kept coming up and hugging her and tears and laughter and crying and everything else. And that's my very first uh, speaking gig. And the reason I share that with, uh, with people is because you never know how you affect people's lives and how you transform people when you're a speaker in any situation. But on cruise ships, you can do the same thing. You get in a lecture, you just never know what's going to be happening. So that's my experience. Wow. With, with, 
it, it was it was amazing to me. So this is a typical document that you would receive from the um, uh, cruise line. And it, it says, thanks for the call. I've included an available itinerary for November. Please let me know if you're interested. And there's about two, four, six, uh, two or six, seven lectures that, that are potentially there. And you can see the, uh, they go from, from Peru to California. Now, you'll note that this is uh, um, Holland America. And, um, you know, they, uh, they pay airfare. So uh, the other cruise lines don't. They pay airfare for the speaker, not the not the partner. So here I am at work. This is with Princess on, and this is an audience. Now I don't know if you can see the guy in the center of the screen in a black T-shirt. He's been leaning over his wife and he's goofing around. Yeah. He's a judge. He and his wife are from Calgary, and um, we spent a lot of time with them. He's a, um, a, a you know a criminal court judge. And uh, you see my wife there next to him, Sarah. And then the two people sitting in the front row that she's got, she's holding her glasses. These are people from Vancouver who came to every one of my lectures. And, uh, and they, they become very good friends. And uh, he's an engineer slash lawyer. Uh, they love the lectures. And then we just met them on the second cruise off to Hawaii. And they, they I mean, just wonderful people so you can you can look have a look at the room and just get a sense of what you're speaking to so you see the the this was just uh, about 10 to 15 minutes before my lecture began and what I typically do is walk around say hello to everybody and say hi and except the people on the second row up top but you might get anywhere from 150 to 180 people and so I took this picture from the stage so this is the kind of thing that you would look to yeah. So how do you become an edutainer? You're now an amateur historian and storyteller. You've, uh, you build some humor into your talk. Um, um, that's what it's about. And however that humor looks for you uh, or looks to you and how you can do that is entirely up to you. I always say to people, you know, just talk about yourself and have fun with it and become self-deprecating, which is always helpful. Laugh at your foibles, lighten up, uh, you know, create the humor. Build your story from the subject matter. And pe folks, people love stories. They don't want to know statistics. They want, don't want to know other than if you can find any historical evidence of anything and then you, you, you find a human component to it and you find out the story behind this person. And that's what, that's what I try to do every time. Whether I, we do one on the Aloha shirt, we've done on, one on the four-legged heroes of the Second World War, First World War, We've done on the Navajo code talkers. I find one person usually in there that I work, you know, that I tell the story about. So that's a big part of it. Enrichment lectures are timeless material, good for any circumstance. Again, four-legged heroes of the war, you can tell that story anywhere. Um, the Her Majesty's Secret Service, anywhere. Any celebrity story, you can tell it any, any cruise that you're on because you know, 90% of the time, it's Americans who are on the cruises. Here's an example, the history of cruising. We do a whole 35 minutes on the history of cruising. Pirate stories, they love pirate stories. Uh, celebrity exposés. Destination lectures are specific to a location. So if you're going to Hawaii or if you're going to uh, the Caribbean or somewhere of that, you, you can build your lectures around that or, and build your titles around that. They're usually cultural. You can have, say the 50 little known facts about the Caribbean or 50 known, little known facts about Hawaii or whatever. Just something to give people something to hold on to, but not, not to drive them crazy. Um, obscure eccentric information is always helpful uh, because people love eccentric stuff. And I have tons of funny stories around that. Um, and then you create anticipation uh, before they arrive at the port. So typically, if, if, it, if I was talking about Aruba, I would have done a presentation about Aruba a day before you get there. So they've taken notes of some of them or whatever, and uh, they know a little bit more about Aruba than someone who's never been there. And uh, Port Angeles, that's a great example. Uh, we were on in Port Angeles um, a couple of cruises back, coming back from Tahiti, actually. And we got to the port, and there's about 10 or 12 people from Port Angeles welcoming us, you know, as we got off the ship, shaking our hands, saying, you know, we hope you enjoy our town. 
um, come in, spend money, have your drinks, have lunch, do whatever. And then on the cruise, uh, another, well, just before we got to Port Angeles, this guy, this, this uh, comedian got up and he was slagging Port Angeles. Why are we going to Port Angeles? It's an, you know, it's the armpit of the world. There's nothing there. Uh, I don't know why cruise ships would want to go there. And he's slagging and going on and on. So that's fine. The next cruise we're on is to Hawaii. I got up and said, um, and we're talking about the Northwest and I was talking about Port Angeles and how wonderful the people were and how well we were accepted. Guess what happened? The two people from the audience came up. They said, we're the greeters in Port Angeles. We're on this cruise because we love cruising and we can't thank you enough for having talked wonderfully about our town. And we're going to share that with the cruise director, which is great. That's what you want to have. So that's the story of that. Now, this is a picture on Princess of the outside screen where Pavarotti was doing a concert. And that was during the day. And I just took that picture because I love Pavarotti. And um, so you're sitting by the pool. You can either read or you can watch. A, um, you know, this was a kind of a, uh, a PBS thing. It wasn't PBS. It was kind of internal to the cruise line. But they have all, this, all kinds of wonderful things like this. And this is my lovely wife and myself on, uh, I think it was that one of the um, yeah, formal nights. Uh, love that. I love dressing up like that. And so does she. And we go out and we have a great time. You don't have to have tux. You can be dressed in a suit and you, it's a very elegant way to, to travel and a very elegant way to spend an evening. And we just love doing that. And this is off Tahiti. Now you see the cruise ship in the background. Um, and this is in the, in the Marquesas Islands. Uh, they, they tended us in to the, to the town and we spent the entire day there, walking the beach, going in the water, uh, having food on the on the on the dockside because the, the food is safe. French part of the of the uh, of, of you know the Tahiti area, and just absolutely wonderful. So here's a, a typical list of topics that resonate with people: cultural history, espionage, forensic, crime investigation. People love that. Anything to do with um, anything to do with CSI. Archaeology, maritime history, world history, world exploration. You can look at that, those, those kinds of categories, and you can find 450 lectures in a heartbeat. Sarah, my, my wife, loves to, to do the research on this stuff. So you can, we have now currently probably about 15 different lectures that we, uh, that we have in our, in our file. So when we want to cruise, we just phone them up and say, okay, we've got uh, 12 lectures. You've got eight, nine sea days. Great. No problem. So that to me is just, it's the perfect opportunity. So you can see that the topics that resonate with, with the cruise lines, what they are. Now, if you're a single person, uh, you'll have your own suite. There are many single people on board by the tons of them. You do not face the same restrictions as a crew, so you're out and you, you can, you're among the passengers, so your, your life is pretty darn cool. You can be as social as you want to be, and I always say if I was a single person today on a cruise ship, I would go to the maitre d' the first night, I'd put 20 bucks in his hand, and I'd say, now, the next time that you see a very attractive young lady by herself with a group and they need someone to come and sit and, and have dinner with them, I want you to think of me because I'll be sitting right over there waiting for you. <laughs> and if I were single, that's what I would do. Uh, so l people who are single, single lecturers, that's, that's a cool way to do it. Other obligations that you have, you're an ambassador for the cruise line. You may be asked to accompany excursions. Uh, I talk a little bit about that. I've never done that, by the way, but I know there are speakers who do that, and they, they get the excursions for free because you're the ambassador on the on the cruise uh, line you may be asked to help with fun and games i've been asked to do that um you may be asked to join a group for dinner and i've done that too so you know you you get because you're a speaker you get to be a little bit of notoriety and not only that you have your groupies they love you and they come up and they talk to you and they want to know all about you here are the four steps to being a cruise speaker you choose a cruise four to six months out you create a destination and or Richmond titles for that itinerary. Now, again, remember, 
the de destination ones are specific to the ports of call that you would have on that trip. And the enrichment ones are the generic ones that you could have for any trip. And so that's part of what you do. You call the cruise speaker coordinator and you present your speaker bio and, uh, and, uh, and your um, titles. And you find out if they say yay or nay. And then you follow up with the cruise coordinator because you can drop off that radar very, very quickly. So when I ever make a connection to somebody, I always say, don't let, don't expect them to be uh, breathlessly waiting to book you in. You've got to certainly be um, just there, just, uh, you know, every second or third week or every, you say, you know, I'm just following up. I want to know where, where, what the story is. We're, we've, we're trying to get a one book for sep September with Princess out of Vancouver. And um, I'm having to follow up with her like every th second or third week because I know uh, they go on to other things. And you just, you know, that's just the way it is. So you've been selected. You receive a confirmation email from the cruise line. You, the cruise line tells you what lectures they want. So that's why I always say you never do your research on your lecture points until they have said, yes, you're in. And by the way, we would like you to do these lectures. Then the push is on to get the research done and get your 35 minute lectures up. And by the way, a typical lecture would have anywhere from 60 to 70 slides. And that includes pictures that don't have text and whatever. Mm -hmm. So just for, for history purposes. And then they send you a contract to sign, which is wonderful. And then they send you the airline tickets for you and your partner. Now, Holland America are the only ones who pay, pay flights for the speaker, not the partner. Uh, Princess and, um, and, Holland America, or, uh, and uh, Royal Caribbean do not pay flights. So you have to keep that in mind. We've, we've done both. We've, uh, we've been on Royal Caribbean because they happen to have an area that we wanted to go on. But generally, um, Holland America are the only people who do that. Tipping policy. Uh, Princess guests covers the tips and the speakers, you know, and then Royal Caribbean, similar to Princess, all in America, no tips are paid. So that's very important to know because you could be spending anywhere from 10, 12, 15, $18 a day, US, which is $93 Canadian, um, per day to, um, uh, for, for tipping. So that's, that's important to know that. Now, here is a letter I received. So this is what happens, folks. Uh, I received this in my, in my mailbox at my room one evening. And so let me read it to you, shall I? Uh, dear Mr. Prevo, uh, I am compelled to write to you to request that you make a correction to one of your slides. How did Oregon get its name? It, IT apostrophe S yes, name. To correct your error, remove the apostrophe from IT apostrophe S. Yes. Please note that IT apostrophe S yes, is the contracted form of it is and should not be confused. Oop. It says this free session will end in 10 minutes. Okay. Oh dear. I could have paid 995, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea. Uh, should not be confused with it's the, the possessive noun, uh, pronoun meaning belonging to it. Perhaps this was a typing error, but you have a responsibility to show you slash use the word in its contract correct form when presenting your material to so many people sincerely, I don't know the name, I can't read it, president of the misuse of the apostrophe society. Don't you love it? <laughs> so I don't know if this is a man or a woman. So I thought it was a, a woman simply because of the way it looked, but it could be a man who wrote it too. So that's the kind of letters you get when you're a cruise speaker <laughs> and, and the comments that you'll get. Now, um, Christine, where do I go to, re to uh, pay here? Um, I have to do it from my end. Okay. I'll owe you some money. <laughs> you just go ahead. Okay. I'll see what I can do here. Okay. So I'm, I'm uh, continuing along here. <clears throat> now, if you have an expert, expertise or a credential in a specific area, um, you can connect your expertise to a lecture. Now, as an example, let me share with you uh, who um, we, we had a uh, NASA retired NASA scientist on board and he did five lectures uh, strictly on space on space and so um, it was fabulous I, I went to every one of his lectures 
so if you have an exp expertise in anthropology or naturalist or a real serious hobby in a particular area, and we've had, I've had people in our workshops who have a specific area. One is, uh, you know, a, an organizer. And she organizes how people, she helps people organize their suitcases. So that could possibly be a possibility for a, um, um, a lecture. Uh, but you'd have to have specific knowledge around that. And I could help you with that. Okay, so hold on a second here. What's going on? Um, have you ever published uh, on your lecture topic? So, like, for instance, in my lecture topic is helping small, or my, my career is helping small business thrive in the big box retail world. I would never use that on a cruise simply because nobody's interested in it and nobody wants to talk business. Um, so just moving along, here are some research resources uh, that you can use. And my wife gets most of the, her um, material from, um, from uh, the um, Wikipedia. So Wikipedia has everything that they've shortened version of it. So if you're going to do any kind of uh, research, this is one area that I'm uh, on this slide that you're seeing. There's so many of them. Uh, but I would venture to say that, um, that there is no, ex there's no uh, shortage of areas to, to, to research product or uh, um, to research that kind of um, topics of any kind that you want. So there you are. Um, this is a sample itinerary from Princess of 2015. And you'll note here, uh, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven lectures. They might, I would say in that there'd probably be, or there might even be six or yes, six there. Um, you, you do maybe five out of that. So let's be going from Vancouver to Honolulu and they, they would fly you back home if that were the case. In our case, we went Vancouver, Vancouver. I did nine lectures on that. Here's, here it is, sample itinerary, September 2015. Here we are on New Year's Eve aboard Princess on the, in the Caribbean um, with other friends uh, from Vancouver. And we had an absolutely incredible time. And my wife absolutely insists on going back New Year's Eve again for another, um, another, Hawaiian, or another um, uh, New Year's Eve cruise. So we're looking forward to that. And these are friends from Vancouver. Um, they, they, by sheer coincidence, got on that, that cruise. We didn't even know they were going to be there. And so we spent quite a lot of time together and had quite a few dinners and fabulous way to travel. Your lecture portfolio, you need a YouTube video of you speaking in front of an audience. And that's what we provide for you in the workshop is that we provide the audience, which will be your fellow attendees. And uh, then we get a YouTube video of you speaking because that's what the cruise line wants to see is see you um, having confidence and being um, in that in front of that audience, then you have a fill in the blank outline of each lecture for your chosen trip, and then a brief biography of yourself and then uh, that 's what we help you with we We brainstorm ideas for that within the um, uh, workshop um, where everybody each person goes one by one and they give their background and whatever, and then we help them craft a really sassy different unique edutainer type profile and that's your biography and there's only about six or seven sentences and that's all you need so how do you wow them on your first cruise well you start out like i mentioned in the beginning you remind everyone that they have won the lottery if they're aboard the ship that's very important that's the way to wow them no question about it you tell them the joke about women ruling the world now if you're a man that's you do that and women well you're on your own i have no idea how you handle that but let me share with you what i tell um First, I say to the, every, all the men in the audience, okay, men, how many of you believe that re women rule the world? And, of course, you get several people who don't raise their hands. So I say, I can see you out there. You didn't raise your hands. Um, and I, my sense is you're sleeping on the sofa once every two weeks. <laughs> so now, tonight, when you're having dinner with your wife, you say, you know that tall, bald, good-looking guy who uh, gave the talk? Um, I believe that you rule the world, too. And you watch how your world will change. So that's a great joke. People love that joke. And then, uh, then men acknowledge your wife. So if you're there as a couple, um, or women acknowledge your husband. And, uh, I, and I say it every time my wife's in any audience that I'm speaking at, I always say that without her, I would not be here, I can tell you. And I mean that sincerely. Um, because I, I have so many 
I, I mean, I have a lot of qualities, but one of them is not organization. And she keeps me on the straight and narrow and organized and, and um, keeps everything in shape. So uh, very important to me. And then ladies, acknowledge your husband, depending if you're, or if you're single, you have to figure out who you're going to acknowledge. Now, here's some, some secrets to grow the audience. You meet the other speakers on board and you learn from them and you attend all their lectures because you could literally be, be having duplicate information. So you don't want to have that happening. Or if you do have it happening, which I've had it done, I'll say, well, Bill this morning alluded to this, this subject matter that I'm going to share with you today and I'm going to give it a little bit of different spin on it. So they know uh, that you're just not mouthing whatever else they say, but you're going to add a, your own little context to it. So it's important to do that. And then you offer to promote the other speakers uh, when you've completed your lecture. So I'll say, you know, uh, George uh, has a great lecture on fly fishing that he'll, he's uh, uh, going to be doing this afternoon at 2 o'clock. I highly recommend you attend his lecture. And he does the same for you. So that builds your audience. And you invite people to your lectures whenever you strike up a conversation. That's a given. So, you know, my wife and I will go for dinner. We'll be sitting at a table of 12 people. First thing they say is, you know, what do you do? And I say, well, I'm a lecturer on the cruise ship. And by the way, I'm doing a lecture tomorrow. It's on, I'm not sure what it's on, but you'll see my name in the, in the schedule. I would love it if you came and, and joined me at the lecture. And most of them do, and they, they love it. And then you thank people by name who reattend your lectures. What I do is, and what I say is, okay, how many people were here yesterday who saw me yesterday? And you usually get about half of them in the room that will raise their hands. And I said, okay, so that $20 I gave you, I hope you spent it well to get you back here again. So just to kind of give them a, as a joke. But, it, you know, and so people come back. They, they come back every time, particularly if you have a great sense of, of gratitude. Uh, it's just, it's magical. And so sometimes I'll have people by name if I get to know them by name. And they, they show up at the front row and they'll show up every time that they're on the front row. Murphy's Law, we had a Mexican cruise uh, during the Vancouver Olympics. And just by, by sheer coincidence, a number of things happened. One is, two days before the cruise, we had a massive flood in our condo uh, that put black water all through the condo, and we had to get out. So we moved out, we moved to a hotel, and it was just before the Vancouver Olympics, and all the hotel rooms were full. So we were able to get through a personal friend who's a manager of a hotel. She, she put us up in a room for what she said, Roy, I can, I, that's the best I can do. Fortunately, uh, we were leaving the next day on a cruise to Mexico. And so we were homeless at home. And so arrival, when we arrived at the, the cruise, I found something strange because nobody knew who we were and nobody was expecting us. And we found out that the head office had forgotten to mention that we were coming on this cruise. So they said, you know, you'll have to go back home. And I said, we have no home to go to. So we're not going back home. Uh, so they said, great, we'll put you up in, the, in the, the crew quarters. And they put us up in this crummy room, which I complained about. And then finally, they gave us a doctor's suite, uh, which was quite wonderful. And they were very happy to do that. However, the uh, the, the, the challenge with, with a lot of cruise ships is the bigger the ship, the more chances are they're going to foul up. And so you have to be totally flexible with these people. So it was Murphy's Law to best, for, and then we relegated to, that, to the, course, the crew quarters with bunk beds. Now, I don't know if your spouse is a great big fan of bunk beds, but mine isn't. And so we, uh, we kind of complained, and they, they were gracious enough, and they said, yes, we screwed up, so we'll get you something, and, and they did. But Murphy's Law happens quite regularly, so you have to be very flexible. And then it went straight downhill from there, as I mentioned. Now, the do is aboard. Do promote your events shamelessly at every opportunity. Do act as an ambassador for the cruise line. Do accept thanks graciously, because people will come up, and they will say great presentation, and they will also bring material of, of, of you on your topic that you may not have thought about. It's totally amazing to me. People come up and they say, um, do you know about this? And there's some obscure thing within it that they've had experience with, and they love to contribute to your presentation. Do mingle with your audience. Um, I, before the, about 10 minutes before the, I start to speak, I go around, shake people's hands. Where are you from? Thank you for coming. Appreciate your being here. Uh, and they love that kind of thing. 
do attend other speakers' events, do offer to be as helpful as possible to the cruise director because his job is tough. And if you offer a certain flexibility and say, look, anything I can do for you, let me know. I've done other lectures. I always keep a couple of lectures in my back pocket. I have uh, changed venues in a heartbeat because something else had happened. I have, uh, so you, I just, I'm there to help them. And be flexible. Remember, the bigger the ship, the more chances things are going to happen. Now, you don't whine or complain to anyone about your situation. Passengers, other speakers, anybody. You know, there's, you don't do that because it'll get back to somebody. Mm -hmm. You never tell other passengers about your arrangement. So if they say, well, how much are you being paid? Or, you know, how do you get to be a, you can tell them essentially how to be a speaker. You can say, come and attend one of my workshops. Uh, but you don't tell people about your arrangement. And we, I, my wife and I are both very straightforward. Sorry, we can't talk about that. And they, people respect that. You don't spread gossip or speak negatively of anyone on board. You don't discuss politics or religion with anyone, particularly in America, because it's very polarized and you get yourself into a lot of hot water. And you don't take up the cruise director's time for no particular reason. They're very busy and they have no time to deal with you know, mundane stuff. Now, if you have something very serious, that's a different story, but generally. And you don't get drunk and try to be the life of the party uh, because that word gets back to And they will send you home. I can tell you this happened to many speakers. Uh, they, they've either got up and got very political and took taken a position on, on politics or they've gotten their um, filthy language. One guy kept, we had a cruise director on one of the cruises. He said, I want to share this with you guys. You're the, your speakers the last speaker, we sent him home halfway through because he all he did was make penis jokes. And so, you know, soup, silly stuff like that, don't even think about it. Here's my lovely wife and I on a, on a zip line uh, in Costa Rica. And uh, so we went zip lining because we wanted to and had some, a lot of fun with that. Now, here is something that's very interesting. As you cruise, you will come across... Um, museums or you'll come uh, local museums or local art of areas like we, we went on a tour of the Queen Mary when we we're in Long Island and not Long Island in Long Beach California so I took a ton of photos of, uh, of this kind of stuff you can see I can read that now so I take that back home and I can do an entire presentation on the Queen Mary which people love because a lot of people don't get to see these kind of tours so when we cruise, we're always looking for material that we can put into a lecture. And it just makes good sense to do that. So it becomes kind of like a little bit of a hobby slash research project that you go into. Here I'm standing in the original, um, uh, that's the wheelhouse of the Queen Mary. And so that's a picture taken of that. And we're, I, I've got this audio thing around my head. So I, I get all the information. I, I know what's going on. This is their gym. How do you like that for a gym? That was their gym back, back in the day. One bicycle and I don't know what the heck else is there. Not much else. And weights and then probably that was a big deal back then. This is a captain's quarters. Um, and we know I, quite, quite nice actually for, you know, back in 1940, 100 years ago or whatever. Now, this is something very interesting. This is where uh, Royal Caribbean have created this arm that goes out about 19 to 25 meters out over the ocean, and uh, 12 people can fit into this thing. So as the cruise is going along, out flips this thing out into the ocean, and you, can, you get a bird's eye view of everything. It's like being on a Ferris wheel that's enclosed. Um, so I'm almost done. Good heavens. Um, speaker cruise for free workshop Thursday, May 14th in Edmonton, 20 people only, two have already signed up. So there's 18 spaces left. So if you're watching this, either recorded or whatever, um, keep this in mind. I give everything at this workshop. There is nothing that you will, uh, that I hide. I have, uh, I, it's all out there. And then what I will do I have, is I, once you've identified your topics, once you have gotten your video together, once you have um, you know, made a decision which cruise you want, then what I do 
is I introduce you to the cruise line. So there are three different cruise lines. I give you the names of the, the, uh, this, the, the um, cruise speaker coordinator, but I also send an email and copy you on it and say, by the way, uh, George is a great speaker. He's, he wants to go on this cruise, and so I'm going to connect you to, and he has his topics, and he has his video, and here it is, and bada bing, bada boom, and then you take it from there. Now, I want to be very clear. I don't guarantee anyone gets going to, is going to become a cruise speaker because I don't know how you interact with people. I don't know how you interact with the cruise um, coordinator. That's entirely up to you. I'll give you everything that you could possibly want and need to become a cruise speaker. Is it possible? Yes. Now, I'm going to give you another tip right here. This is worth the price of admission, folks. You can go on Fiverr and ask for somebody to put up 60 slides uh, for a particular location or whatever, and they will do it for you for five bucks. So you don't have to go through all of that, but you have to make it yours. So you have to go through the presentation, understand what they've done, and there's still some work to be done behind it. So that's for Edmonton, Thursday, May 14th, 2015, 20 people, and um, 18 spaces left. Come on down, it's worth it. Here are the workshop details. We ask you to bring a pr chosen cruise with you. So when you come, you, you, you've gone online, you've gone to the Royal Caribbean or Princess or Hall in America, you've chosen a cruise six months out or whatever time, April of next year or January, February. I've had people who want to do something over Christmas, but you choose, you, you take a chosen cruise. We help you brainstorm ideas for titles for that cruise so that you're, you have those titles already. We help you with the lecture content, what to put into it, what's involved in it. Um, we reconstruct your bio resume for cruise speaking since you're now an edutainer. We give you all the protocols of getting the, the, the cruise speaker planner to pay attention and to hire you. Uh, then I present a typical 40 minute uh, cruise lecture and then I dissect it down so everyone can see the, the triggers that are there and how to add levity to the event and how you can add fun to it. And this is the one, the one I do is on the history of cruising. Um, I also, we also teach you how to research and compile your presentations. We teach you how to wow people on your first cruise. I gave you a couple of hints, but there are more. Um, I just don't, didn't take the time to do them now. I, how to endear yourself to the audience and, and create your onboard groupies. And you have onboard groupies. You'll find them. You'll see them. They'll come looking for you. And then we provide you with a name and phone number and email of the speaker coordinator at Princess Royal Caribbean and Holland America. And a super bonus, uh, our visual, visual team will create a five, three to five minute video of you performing in front of an in-house audience, as I mentioned earlier. And this is for the cruise speaker coordinator so they can see who you are and how you act in front of an audience, and that audience will be your fellow attendees. And that, that value alone is 700 bucks. I, I've seen people who paid $1,000 for a three to five minute video, and no BS about that. Right. And then I give you a 60 minute group coaching to motivate you and nudge you to take action. And that's after the whole event's over. So I send out a message saying, okay, you wanna be coached? Here we are. We did a group coaching format. The 20 people who are on the in the audience, they get the opportunity to come to that 60 minute. And I my time is $275 an hour when I teach, and that's there. Your investment, 657 plus GST. Tonight only or early bird until May 1st, 497 plus GST. Bada bing, bada boom. Until May 1st only, we may stretch that a little bit, Christine, right? I mean, we may add a, a few more days to that, or what do you think? What's your thoughts on that? Well, we might. We might just stretch it a tad. A tad, but not by, not by much. Yeah. Please note, 20 people per workshop, 18 spaces left. Last one in Edmonton that I will probably ever be doing in Edmonton. I'm not sure, but uh, unless, we, you know, I, I mean... For the moment, that's the last one I'll do in Edmonton because I'm on Vancouver on May 30th, Vancouver on June 27th, San Diego in August, and Seattle in August. So, and then July take off, and you know, there we are. Awesome. Thank you. I've learned that people, my Angelou says, I've learned that people will forget what you said, people forget what you did. Oops, sorry, but they will never forget how you made them feel. 
And so when people come to my workshops or my lectures, they feel great. So that's the fact. And there we are. That's my number. That's my phone number. Uh, and the uh, website is speakerscruiseforfree.com. You can go there. Uh, this is my personal website. I wouldn't do a bit any interest to you probably for that, but uh, speakerscruiseforfree.com is it. And there we are. And that is the end of that presentation. And let me go up here. Um, you're doing it from your end, Christine? Yes. Thank you're you. So I, I just, do, are there any questions? George, do you have any questions? I'm, I'm fascinated by your talk. I, I don't know. Uh, uh, is it just the three of us on, Christine? Yes. Okay, then, then I'll speak candidly. I, I, you know, thank you for this. Pardon? I'm going to just stop recording.